Hello, and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's problem of the week. So for the full problem and the solution transcript, you can feel free to check the description of this video on our YouTube channel. Uh, so this week's problem of the week features two um, uh, paradoxes, and I kind of put that in quotes because uh, it's a little debatable whether or not both of them are paradoxes or not. But um, uh, they're both really cool, and they both use math, and they're, the latter is actually kind of useful in the real world, but um, I'll get into that later. <laughs> So uh, the first one is no, also known as Gabriel's Horn, also the Painter's Paradox. So this is a really cool problem for someone in um, a calculus course. I believe Calc 2 or maybe Calc 1 too. Um, we'll go over this. Um, so let's get started. Um, you're given a function, y is equal to 1 divided by x. Um, as we all know, that will look like this um, if x is going from 1 to infinity. Um, and this function is rotated around the x-axis to make this horn-like shape. Uh, so it does look like that. I have a better uh, picture of it in the question, which you can find on our blog. Um, but uh, that is what you need. And it asks you if it is possible to paint the outside of this horn, um, or if it would be easier to fill the inside with paint. And so what that question is basically asking is, find the surface area of the horn, and also find the volume of the horn. Because surface area has to do with painting the outside, and of course volume has to do with filling the inside. So I'm going to start with the volume integral. Uh, so you might be asking, where did I get this from? Well, this is uh, something called, that I'm using called the method of disks. And what I'm doing is I am dividing um, this large, well, infinitely long, too, um, shape into infinitely small disks. I am going to add them up all the way from 1 all the way to infinity. Um, and so the way I got the area of these disks, the cross-sectional area, and I'm multiplying it by a very, very thin um, dx, um, is because we're using circles, circular disks, for this method. And of course, the area of a circle you know, or disk is pi r squared. And r is going to be equal to y, because that's going to describe how far we go from the center to the end, which is the radius. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the um, value of y that will give us 1 to infinity pi dx over x squared, because I am just plugging in y and then squaring it. OK, so this value is pretty easily. Uh, we get negative pi times 1 over x evaluated 1 to infinity. And what that gives you is pi, positive pi. Uh, so we're looking at positive pi uh, units of volume in this shape. So yes, it would be possible to fill it with um, paint, because there is only pi uh, units of volume. But the next step is to find the surface area. So how easy or hard would it be to paint the, out the outer surface of this shape? Okay. Uh, so for the surface area, we are going to um, think about a very uh, so one element of surface area, and you kind of look at, um, do the same thing, but kind of with these rings. And what that does look like is 2 pi, uh, 2 pi y ds. Um, but this ds is going to be described by difference of two points on your function. There is a dy and a dx. And this um, line over here is going to describe your ds. And um, Pythagorean theorem does tell us that this is going to be equal to square root dx squared plus dy squared. Um, and from this, you can pull out a uh, dx squared, but that's from a square root, so we get dx out. And we can, and we can then reshape that to this. And I'm going to plug that in, and I'm going to integrate to get the surface area. Okay, so I've plugged that in, and now I'm going to make an argument um, that is going to make sense uh, later. I'm going to say that this value is going to be greater than um, the integral from 1 to infinity of 2 pi y uh, dx, just that. And the reason why I can make that is because 1 plus, uh, for our real numbers right here, 1 plus um, y prime squared is going to be greater than 1. So um, this has to be um, greater than so this value of 2 pi y, um, this value of 2 pi y dx has to be less than 
this, and now you're going to see something weird happen because if, so if we know this integral um, becomes infinite or um, doesn't converge, then we also know this one does the same thing. And that would be problematic if you want to paint it, but I am going to evaluate this and you will see that um, the integral does not converge and that would be a problem if you tried to paint it. Uh, so I did the same thing as before. I uh, plugged in y is equal to 1 over x. And what you get from this Uh, you get 2 pi L, um, times ln of x evaluated from 1 to infinity. Well, ln of infinity is infinity. So um, this is problematic because that means this goes to infinity. Uh, this integral being greater than this one will also go to infinity. And that means your surface area is going to go to infinity. So if you try to paint this on the outside, you are not going to have enough paint no matter what you do, unless you have infinite. Uh, but that gets a little dicey. Um, but your volume is finite, so you could theoretically fill this shape with pi units, cubic units of paint, but you could not paint the outside, which is kind of weird and kind of paradoxical, and that is why this is known as the painter's paradox. Uh, for the second one, um, we have what's known as the St. Petersburg paradox. And what this says is you're playing a gambling game. Um, I added a, an initial condition that isn't always added, but um, it's not actually going to matter because of the paradoxical result. So, um, what you have is you flip a coin, um, you pay twenty dollars to play this game, and you flip a coin. And when heads shows up for the, for the first time, you get paid two n dollars, where n is equal to however many flips it took for that heads to show up. Um, so I'm going to write this in a table so it's easier to see. Uh, I have let n be the number of flips, uh, the flip number of the first head. So if it comes up the first time, n is one. Comes up the third time, n is three. Um, so I let x equal the amount of money you get. And I'm also going to take note of the probability of getting x. So let's just start by the easy case. One, so you get, theoretically, um, on your first try, you get heads. So if that happens, you get $2. And the probability of this is just a 50-50, because if, a, if you have a fair coin, you flip it, there's a 50% chance of tails, 50% chance of heads. So probability of that is 1 half. Uh, the next um, two, uh, that would result in a profit of $4. And you would get this if your first one is tails and the probability of that is one half. And then if your second one is half, is um, heads, and the probability of that is also one half. So I'll do one more and then you'll just see the pattern, of course. But um, you might already see it. Um, it takes three tries, you'll get $8 because two to the power of three is eight. Um, first one tails is one half chance, second one tails is one half chance, third one heads is one half chance. And hopefully you are seeing the pattern, the probability of x. Um, so I'm just going to write, uh, so for it to take n times, you'll get 2 to the power of n dollars, and your probability of getting this is going to be 1 divided by 2 to the n. OK, so that's basically all we need. And now we can calculate an expectation value. Um, so I have said that this sum is going to go from n equals 1 to infinity, because technically it is possible to get tails every single time um, until, well, infinity. Um, so I'm going to let this go from n equals 1 to infinity. Um, x times the probability of x. Um, but we have said that x, you, you're going to win 2 to the n dollars for each one. But the probability of x is going to be 1 divided by 2 to the n. Uh, what, is that, what exactly does that mean? Well, this means that this sum is going to be equal to 1 plus 1, plus 1, all the way to infinity. Your expected value uh, for winning this game is infinite dollars, and that is paradoxical. <laughs> um, so even though it costs $20 to play, you are expected to win infinite money, and that's kind of crazy. Uh, that is a paradox. Um, known as St. Petersburg paradox. And like I said, you can use this in the real world. Um, you can kind of quote unquote abuse it to always win at gambling. I'm not going to go into how you can do that. Um, you can look that up on your own turn, on your own time. I believe that strategy is banned in Las Vegas. But anyway, those are two kind of um, quote unquote mathematical paradoxes. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, if you want to see more problems of the week and advanced knowledge problems of the week, you can feel free to click up here. If you want to visit us, uh, if you want to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, feel free to click right there. If you want to visit us on centermath.org, feel free to click down there. And if you are on a mobile device, you can 
see that I in the top corner up there. And if you click that, it should give you the same links. Thank you very much for watching.